internal threads in aluminium are easy prey to being stripped out by steel bolts. Hello and welcome again to another episode on the White Dog Garage YouTube channel. My name is Bob. In this episode we are repairing stripped out threads in the alloy head of a motorcycle engine. The engine is still in the frame and that's going to make the job just that little bit harder. But there's a few tricks that I will show you as we go about it. The bolts seen here hold down an aluminium casting to cylinder head cover. The cover sits on top of the cylinder head and removal allows access to the cams and the valve train, meaning it gets removed every time the valve clearances are checked. Of course I only realised that the threads had stripped when I was doing the final tightening of all the 24 bolts that hold it down. One of the strip threads I had repaired some time ago with an insert, but this time the insert had been pulled out, so a more complex repair was required. The threaded area was open at the bottom, so my initial response was to force a longer bolt down through the hole and attach a nut and washers. Wishful thinking on my part had me hoping that the two remaining strip threads might work until the next service. But within about 100 kilometres or 60 miles, the cover was leaking oil badly, necessitating a more robust repair. The bolt holes on both sides at the front of the cam chain tunnel had strip threads, and the pathway the oil was taking to the outside can be clearly seen on the tunnel front and the corresponding position on the cover. I normally recover the threads with off the shelf inserts one of which I will demonstrate the fitting of later in the video. The worst one, the one that I had inserted the bolt through, needed a bigger insert which I chose to make. All the threads holding the cover down are 6mm in diameter with a pitch of 1mm. This size is also commonly called M6. The insert I was going to make would have an outer thread diameter of 8mm with a pitch of 1.25mm and this thread is also called M8. My first job was to oversize the 6mm hole to take an M8 tap. The correct size tapping drill is 6.75mm and 6.5mm would work for aluminium. However, the hole itself was directly under a frame member so a drill even a right angle drill was too big to fit in the space available. With the thread insert pulled out however, the hole was probably very close to 6.5mm in diameter. Pushing my luck here, I am forcing an M8 taper tap to cut the thread directly into that hole. As a lubricant, I am using WD-40, lots of it. Aluminium is soft and provided the tap can get a good purchase, taken slowly, it will do the job of both enlarging the hole and cutting the new thread. Because of the proximity of the frame, I can't use a T-bar to turn the tap, and instead I'm using a socket on an extension to drive the tap down into the hole. The socket I'm using is a star drive or e-torque socket and is a neat fit on the square drive shank of the tap. A spanner on top of the tap would also work, but you need to be very careful to keep it perpendicular to the surface. I know with the rag surrounding the hole, it looks a bit like surgery, and it is in a way, but I try to keep a cover in place over the open top of the motor to prevent swarf and tools falling in. The bolt hole is open down the bottom and a quick blast with compressed air blows the swarf down and out. With the bolt hole re-threaded to M8, it is off to make the insert. Taking a shortcut here, I am simply modifying an M8 bolt. As I'm going to mount the bolt in the lathe, I first remove the head of the bolt using a hacksaw. You don't need to get too precious about this type of repair. 
Modifying a bolt is just as good as using a purpose-made insert. I guess I could channel the author Robert Persig here, where in his book Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance, he describes using a piece of beer can to shim the loose handlebars on his friend's BMW motorcycle. A high quality German machine being fixed with a piece of cheap American beer can? You can imagine his friend's distaste for that solution to his problem. But Persick is right, it would do the job perfectly. The shank of the bolt is then mounted in the three door chuck. Happy that it's turning close to true, I then move to drilling and tapping the centre of the bolt for an M6 internal thread. I first use a centre drill to spot the position for the tapping drill. As the internal thread will be M6, that's 6mm diameter with a pitch of 1mm, the tapping drill will be 5mm. I set the taper tap up in the lathe, using a fixed centre in the drill chuck to align the T-bar and the tap with the hole to be threaded. The lubricant I'm using is called Trefilex Cutting Paste. It's a CRC product. Once I've reached the end of the hole with the taper tap, I change to a plug or bottom tap to complete the internal thread. Once the internal thread is done, I check its soundness with a 6mm bolt. Finally, I used a parting tool to cut the insert away from the rest of the bolt. To screw the insert in, I first wind a nut on the end of the thread of a 6mm bolt. 
I then wind on the insert until it bottoms out on the nut face. I added a dab of Loctite medium strength adhesive thread locker to the outer 8mm thread of the insert and then screwed it in. A thread locker is not strictly needed but I do it anyway because I'm a belt and braces sort of person. Holding the nut in place to prevent the insert screwing back out, I wind the bolt partially out before withdrawing both bolt and nut completely. There are two remaining threaded holes to be repaired on this motor. For these I will be using off the shelf inserts. The product I am using is recoil thread repair kits and this is the m 6 by one mm one. The kit comes with a tap which matches the outer thread of the insert, an insert tool and a tang breaker. I have had these kits for years and I can tell you that once you use the inserts up that come with the kit you can readily buy more. Well, at least in Australia. The only defect I see in the kit is that you have to go and find your tapping drill. But, later versions of the kits also come with the correct tapping drill to suit the tap and that's a very useful improvement. Like the first hull, access to this hull is blocked by frame members. Once again, even a right angle drill is too big to fit into the space available. The tapping drill size for the insert tap is one quarter of an inch and I've resorted to securing the twist drill in a small chuck that takes a quarter inch drive which I'm turning using a quarter inch ratchet wrench. Yeah I know, it's a lot of quarter inches. With the hole drilled out, I insert the recoil tap and again use a star drive or e torque socket to turn it. I use an extension bar and a knuckle joint to get the alignment right on the tap before changing to a small ratchet wrench. As before, WD-40 is my preferred lubricant for running a tap down in aluminium alloy. With the tap removed, it's time to fit the insert. Included in the kit is a fitting tool which I'm demonstrating here. The insert has a tang at the bottom of the thread that is engaged by a slot in the bottom of the fitting tool. An adjustable collar at the top stops the thread coil from stretching. Unfortunately for me the insert tool is too long to go under the frame. But 
Having encountered this problem before, I have long ago fashioned my own insert tool by cutting, slotting and bending a 4 inch or 100 mm nail to produce a replicate with a shorter length. One day I should probably fit a collar as well, but I find if I take it easy the collar is not strictly needed. I then use this tool to screw the insert into the head. I like to screw the insert in until it is about one whole thread below the surface. With the insert in place, I then insert the tang breaker tool down the centre of the insert and still it strikes the tang at the bottom of the thread. There is a groove across the end of the tang breaker. I turn the tang breaker until this groove engages the tang and give it a short tap and that breaks the tang off. This is an open hole so it just falls down through the hole. In blind holes I put a dab of grease on the end of the tool which the tang will adhere to allowing it to be fished out. I have one more insert to do, this time it's into a blind hole but the process is similar to the one I've just shown and again a frame member will be in the way. With the inserts all fitted it's time to refit the cover and tighten it down. The moment of truth. This unfortunately is often when you find other strip threads. But it's all good this time. Which is great. So I hope you enjoyed the video and if you did I'd welcome a thumbs up. And by all means share it widely. All your friends, all the people who aren't your friends. It's all good.